So we're going to do something today that some of you may have already seen online in a couple of places. And it's cooking hot dogs using electricity. Now, pretty much everyone that has done it mainly uses alternating current. So I'm going to take a different approach here, and I'm going to use direct current, which does not alternate between positive and negative voltages like alternating current does. Also, most people like to use the alternating current that comes directly out of the wall socket, which is 120 volts. And if you're in the U.S., it's 60 hertz, but the frequency doesn't matter in this case because the hot dog is cooking through resistive heating. Basically, the hot dog is acting like a heating coil. Because <clears throat> when, when you use an electric heater for warmth and comfort, the heater is just a fan motor that's blowing air through a set of modified resistors, which are just heating coils. And so that's where you get resistive heating from. The draw side of that is that it can use a lot of current because it's about 90 to 95% efficient. Most of the electricity is converted into heat. And all this squeaking you're probably hearing is me putting on nitrile gloves. The size that I have is actually just a tad too small. But I guess I can manage it. Anyway, our power source we're going to use for this direct current experiment is going to be this 5-cell lithium polymer battery. Its nominal voltage is 18.5 volts. Fully charged right now, it's around 21 volts. And it's got 3.2 amp hours of capacity, so it should be able to handle a large amount of current should we have an issue with that. And for this, I've decided to also make some custom electrodes. This is just 28 gauge plate steel that I soldered some wire onto because the best way I see to do it is to take advantage of the most surface area that you can. As a lot of people that use the alternating current method, they cook the hot dog by putting the electrodes in at the ends. And the hot dogs are right up. I kind of use clamps to hold those in place. I had to use different ones compared to these since those were actually putting too much pressure on it. I got wires. And this can take some effort. I'm getting two and a quarter amps when I had it plugged in. Let's see. So definitely using those electrodes makes it a lot different. Got, got 2.1 amps. Current's increasing a little bit. If I can see bubbling on this electrode here. Two point four amps. And just being very observant about what's going on here. May follow up with an explanation later. It can be seen. I don't know how well the zoom works. You may be able to hear it. And the obvious question to ask yourself, is it really heating the hot dog or is it heating it and also electrolyzing it? Because direct current is used for electrolysis and there's plenty of liquid inside a hot dog.
current is starting to go up again pretty rapidly. Seven. Current's rising, so it's heating it up even faster as it rises. It may be because liquid is getting on the plate and creating a point where the current can flow. Three amps. Oh yeah, I can actually feel a little bit of the heat when I put my face over it. It's definitely heating that thing up. Amen. Three point four amps. This thing is really toasting it now. Yeah, there it is. jumped a little bit. <laughs> yeah, but I can see steam. That sounds like a cooked hot dog to me. <laughs> yeah, the uh, resistance hot of uh, the hot dog just increased some. Current just went down. Yeah. You can certainly hear it popping. It's still holding it about 2.6 amps. How long have we been going? See the hot dog getting blackened and charred between the electrodes. But I can't imagine the temperature of it right now. I didn't bring the temperature probe up here with me. I always get a little jumpy every time that thing pops. <laughs> but yeah, the current is dropping, so it's definitely drying the hot dog out. And the more it dries out, the higher the resistance is. You can see where it pops them under there. You can see the liquid on the side here.
It actually bulged in a couple spots. Yeah, we're down to two amps. I think we're going to quit here. Disconnect power. Okay. Hold the plug. So now it's not getting any more power from the battery. We're going to release these clamps and we're going to look what happened here. Good, so that's a good sign. You can tell this clamp is loose. Those clamps are loose. And that thing must have gotten so hot that the uh, clamps have burn marks on the electrodes. Okay, that's smoking. That one's all black. <laughs> and this one is clean. And that's kind of part of why I think it may be electrolyzing the hot dog because when an electrode is coated in black soot instead of the other, this electrode here was the negative terminal. This one here was the positive. So, and as far as the hot dog goes, it looks pretty warm too. Pretty tenderized. Let me tell you though, it smells terrible. <laughs> so I'm back and I've got a surgical knife. I'm gonna cut into it with here. And you'll see what we've got. <laughs> and surprisingly that the bottom of the plate is also burned up. Hot dog is quite hot. Feeling it here? This is quite hot. Actually, Inside looks all right. Although I still wouldn't eat this. I wouldn't even eat a hot dog that was cooked with the AC current. <laughs> Especially when you got it looking like this. took roughly the same time. The difference is this you can do anywhere if you got the battery and all the cables and your own custom electrodes. Yep. <sighs> well, that's pretty much it for this. 